inside the reapers, and he he passed parched grain to her, and she ate and was satisfied, and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. Also, let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening, and beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Then she took it, took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. So she brought out and gave to her what she had kept back after she had been satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where have you gleaned today? And where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, The man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. And Naomi said to her, This man is relation of ours, one of our close relatives. Ruth the Moabite said, He also said to me, You shall stay close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with the young women and that people do not meet you in any other field. So she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of the barley harvest and wheat harvest, and she dwelt with her mother-in-law. And we're talking about your, your appointed time for your ordained favor. Your appointed time for your ordained favor. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We began to speak on last week uh, about is walking in your ordained favor. Uh, and so forth. We began to go over how Naomi, when Naomi came back and Naomi came to the city, and they began to uh, be excited to see it, uh, Naomi. And Naomi brought Ruth back with her. As soon as they made it back, uh, to the city, Naomi was ready to go to, I mean, Ruth was ready to go to work. Ruth said, may I go and find favor in the sight that I go and work. Ruth already had prepared herself to walk by faith. It's like, okay, Naomi, you want to help me from Moab, and now I'm over here, and now that I'm over here, I, I need to go. Can I go? And she went to Naomi to asked Naomi uh, permission should she go, and Naomi told her to go ahead and go to the field to glean, and that's what she did. She walked by faith because by by Ruth being a Moabite and she coming over here, now this is Naomi ground. Naomi know what's going on in this country, so she began to get notice of Naomi, of should I go, and Naomi told her, yes, go. So she began to go and glean, and as she began to glean, and so forth, it was already set up for her to have favor because when she began to go and glean, the reapers, they took notice of her, but it was Boaz the one that said, who is this young, who is this young woman? And they began to explain, this is the young Moabite that came back with Naomi and so forth. He took notice and he let her continue to glean because he could have told her, no, you get away from her because you're a foreigner and you ain't got no business over here. Hallelujah. But as we see, as it as it continued to go on in verse twelve, as when as as Ruth have found favor in Boaz and so forth, and Boaz said, "I see that you have been with your mother-in-law, and you have heard in verse eleven that you have helped her and so forth, and you know the death of her husband and your husband and so forth." And Ruth ain't saying nothing about her family in Moab. Ruth concerned is her helping Naomi, her having something left back to give to Naomi. And in verse 12, Boaz tell her, the Lord repay your work in full reward, be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing you have come for refuge. 
See, you are you came. She said she remember she told Naomi, your God gonna be my God. So she accepted God and she said he said, Now, since you have lined yourself up with God and you have come up under his wings and so forth, you have come into his reference, he said, God gonna repay you. God gonna repay you for your work that you have already done just by you coming to the Lord. God have a reward for those who accept him, who, who come to him and really serve him with, with their whole heart. Hallelujah. Then she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. See, she said, now, Boaz, let me find favor in your sight. Will she already have found favor? When you have an ordained connection and it's your time to walk in something, can't nobody interfere with that. Nobody but you. Can't nobody interfere with that but you. Ruth was at the right place at the right time. And she was, she was, the instructions that she was given when Naomi was telling her, step by step, you go here, you go and glean. When Boaz told, okay, you, you, you stay right here and you glean from here. See, it's all about little simple instructions and so forth and lining yourself up with the word of God where you can get to that place where you need to uh, get. You have to know your time, your appointed time, where you can walk in your ordained favor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. She said, now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here and eat of the bread and dip, dip your, piece, your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her and she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. There were no self she sent and God, God prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God, your gift will make room for you. You have to know your your gift will make room for you where you will sit at the you will stand before great men. Your gift, God's favor, ordained time. The, the, wherever it is that God wants you to be, you can get there. Amen. God going to make sure that you get there. He prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God already know how to say, that's why you don't have to worry about your enemies. You don't have to see because by her being a foreigner, these could be her enemies. Because this, they weren't supposed to connect anyway. This is a Moabite. These are Israelites. They weren't supposed to connect. God know how to set things up. That's the reason why you don't have to worry about people. You don't have to worry about your enemies. All you got to do is just trust in God and obey God. That's the main thing of obeying God. Hallelujah. She was having dinner and, and, and didn't even know she already having dinner with her husband. Didn't even know. You don't know how God will set things up because you look past things because it ain't the way that you feel like that it should go. Oh, we didn't meet the way that we, we thought what that we was going to meet. She was in the field bleeding. Now she at Boaz's table. She's sitting around the table with great men eating dinner. They passing the bread around to her to eat. And then she got enough where she gets satisfied, but then she's not selfish. She keeps on back for Naomi. She keeps on back to take to Naomi. After she gets satisfied, she's still humble. She sit at the table. She 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 know how to carry herself as a, a woman where she didn't just go and just jump at the table. She was invited to the table. See, a lot of times we just want to go and jump at the table or we just want to go and jump in a situation. No, it's best to get invited. It's best to be called up. It's best for God to do it. I don't want to lift myself up. I don't want to call myself to a place. I want God to do it. Yes. I want God to do it. She was having dinner with her husband and didn't even know it. Because we look at what's going on, what a person doing, how a person looks, what a person got, what a person don't got. All of this type of stuff. Because remember, Ruth didn't even know about his wealth yet. She didn't know about his wealth. All she knows is that she in the field, now he's saying, you stay here in this field and you glean from this field. She didn't even know that he had already asked the reapers, okay, y'all leave some back for her. Well, she dropped it purposely. That's favor. That's ordained favor. That's ordained provision where God 
make sure that you have something. That God makes sure that he, whatever it is that you need, it's going to be provided. She began to glean. When you glean, you collect bit by bit. You got something where you can go and grab bit by bit. It might not be what you think it is because a lot of times when people think that, oh, everything just supposed to be all right there, sometimes you're going to get bit by bit. But you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have provision. You're going to have what you need. But if you look over it and you look past, you're going to miss it. But collect bit by bit to obtain and get. So you got to get exactly what God has for you to take and to draw together. That's together up things, together up. Because at this time when you glean, this was something that was missed. This was something that was left back for the poor where they would have food to eat. Divinely ordained provision. Where you would have ordained provision to be able to eat, to be able to have. Where you're not, a lot of times we think that we would doubt because we might not have what the next person has or just because we might have a little bit, we feel like we don't got it. But we look, we missing of what God already done and how he have divinely ordained provision for us, already set up. We look over that. Because we wasteful. <coughs> and see, Ruth wasn't wasteful. Ruth said, I want to catch everything that I can get. I want to catch this and bundle it up. And then I also want to take some home to Naomi so that Naomi can have it. See, you can't despise the days of small beginnings, of small things. See, this small to, because we feel like, oh, we got to work, oh, we got to do that, and, and you know, and, and so forth, just like this ministry. You, you start off small, and you, you, you study going, but you can't despise that. You have to be faithful in that and then allow God to elevate it and allow God to bless what he want to bless. God already go before us. God already have things set up before us. He already got it. He already got it figured out. That's why I say your appointed time. Your appointed time. See, appointed means decided on beforehand. See, God already go before us. He already had it scheduled. That's another uh, definition of appointed, scheduled. Where God already have that time scheduled out of what we're supposed to walk in and what we're supposed to do. Be assigned to a position where God know the position to put you in. He knows the right position to assign you to. But you have to trust God. You have to trust God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, and where I leave off at. And when, and when she arose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the shearers, and do not reproach her. He said, now don't go to her. He said, you let her glean. He said, you let her glean. Even among the shearers, he said, go. Well, she gonna have more than enough. She ain't just gonna catch bit by bit. She finna, whatever they leave back for her, she finna get that and some more. That's the old, that's God's favor. That's God already setting things up. You don't know who God will use to bless you. You don't know because you can be looking at just because a person uh, dress sharp or just because a person pull up nice or just because a person, you don't know who God will use to bless you. It could be a child that bless you. It could be somebody on the street. And just because you see them on the street, oh, I don't want to see that, you know, they ain't say, no, you better, no, that's wrong. Right. Whoever God want to use to bless you, let them bless you. Because God already have went before you. God already know what you need before you even ask. Yes. The, your thing is being at the right place at the right time so that you can receive it. You can't just get lost of thinking, okay, well, uh, no. God, God, if God said he would do it, why we won't believe that God can do it? It's like some things like, okay, God, you said you would do it. I believe your word, but you ain't did it yet. But I'm going to stand on your word and trust that you're going to really do it. But then I can be looking over here for God to do it. And God said, it ain't even over there. God said, I got this coming from way from California. And you study looking looking over here. And God said, no, I got it. I got it coming from California. So we cannot. We it, It's all being set up in God. Letting God have his way. Wherever God said, okay, now. This is this is where I want you to be. 
this is where I, I want you to, I want you to just sit here. And and you wondering why, okay, God, I need to do this. No, God said, just do this. Because your blessing is caught up in your obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. When you continue to line yourself up more and more with God, because you can't force God on nobody. You can't force obedience. You can't force holiness. You can't force none of that stuff. That is an individual making that choice of this is what I want. I want God and I want to obey God. I want to obey God's word. Amen. That's what I want to do. But when you don't, he said, don't even, he said, don't even, don't even rebuke her. You you don't go to her. You don't, you don't go and, and, and no, you don't do this and you don't go over there and all that. No, he said, don't say nothing to her. Just let her bleed. Do you see the, the that ordained favor? Do you see she was at the right place at the right time and this was appointed? This was appointed time. Ordained favor for her to receive God's blessing. This is a babe that just came to God. Yeah. Don't know no lot of scriptures because she remembers she came to God because of Naomi. All she was doing is looking at Naomi's lifestyle. She came to God and she automatically started walking by faith. Amen. She already said, let me let me go that I may find favor in the sight. Whoever feel that she go to and she found favor. See, it just take a little faith, the size of a mustard seed, for us to work the little faith that we have. But our faith should automatically start growing. More and more you get in the word, the faith should grow. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to keep hearing the word of God to be built up in faith. If you're not hearing the word of God, you cannot be built up in faith. Who wants this false, false, uh, favor this false uh relationship and so forth no you want it to be authentic in god then yes. i'm gonna trust god and i'm gonna sir i want this for myself yes you can't want it for your neighbor more than you want it for yourself you can trust that god will touch your neighbor or that god will do this for the next person but we have to get it for ourselves first before we can give it to anybody else. Amen. Naomi lifestyle had to line up with God's word in order for her to draw root. Because remember, Oprah already had turned back and went back to her family. Oprah said, I'm gone. I'm gone back. But Ruth stayed. She stayed and she followed Naomi. She was concerned. Because remember, Ruth named me friend, companion. So she was concerned. This was her mother-in-law. All of them had lost someone very close to them. But she knew that Naomi was old, but she went with, with Naomi. Amen. And she didn't tell Naomi, come on, go out in the field with me. She went. Amen. I'm the young one. Let me go. She went. She activated her faith by moving on. Hallelujah. And that's what we have to do. We have to walk by faith. Stop walking by sight so much of what we see. You know, it looked like this and it looked like that. No, we got to walk by faith. Yes. We got to walk by faith. Yeah, I don't see it yet. Yeah, but God, I believe your word. I believe your word. So if I believe God's word, then I need to keep the word before me and keep standing on it and keep walking. And whatever God tell me to do, I need to do it. Because that's what's going to release your blessing. If you... Say, well, no, I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it. Then you be in rebellious. You're not obeying God's word, and you're not walking by faith. And then that's when stuff begin to crumble. But when you wait on God, see, this was this was a point of time right here. Yeah. This was set up. This was the great time. She was in the right place at the right time, hooked up with the right people. That's the reason why you need godly connection. You have to get rid of all of that worldly connection yeah. Yeah. and worldly advice, and you got to get some godly connection where you can get some godly growth. Yeah. That's going to make you grow. Hallelujah. We got to grow in God. We can't stay at the same place. We got to grow in God. We got to get rid of those old mentalities, the old way of thinking. We got to think like God. Amen. We got to think like God so we're able to grow. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So she, we're in Ruth, the second chapter of the 17th verse. Hallelujah. So she gleaned in the field until evening and beat out what she had gleaned 
and it was about an ever of barley. Now she began to stay out there and she kept bleeding. She, she, you can tell that I don't want nobody to just give me nothing. She began to glean until evening. She kept on gleaning until she had, until, hallelujah, she had an apple of barley. This was about 26 to 27 quarts of barley. This was enough grain to feed a working man for several weeks. This, this is how much grain, this young woman that's, that's out there, that's, that's gleaning. Like, okay, God, this is an overflow. She had an overflow. Amen. She had an overflow. Giving herself over to God. Giving herself over to just, God, I'm not just, see, uh, faith without works is dead. She worked her faith because she went. She bust the move. She's like, no, I'm going to go to the field. And I'm going to stay there. This was about 26 to 27 quarts of barley. To be working a working man for several weeks. See, the generosity was evidence for Naomi that the Lord hadn't left you, Naomi. Amen. The Lord is with you. You remember you said the Lord don't forsake you, that He He dealt very bitterly with you. Mm -hmm. But you lied on God <laughs> because she was bitter. When you bitter, you begin to lie. Yeah. When you angry, you begin to lie and you begin to attack other people. She began to attack God, that God is doing this to her. No, Naomi. No, no, no. Go back to the first beginning. Remember, you and your husband and your two sons, you all left here when it was a famine, and you went to Moab, and God told you don't go over to Moab, but you went anyway. Then when you went over to Moab, see, it's a way that seemed right to a man, but after that, at the end of his death, so when they went over there, her husband died, her two sons died, but before her two sons died, they ended up uh, married two more wives, and God told them do not connect themselves, but they did anyway. Now, Naomi, you got to think about all of that. Y'all left, and God didn't tell you to leave. God told you to stay there. Then they would have seen God's faithfulness because God came back to the people. And when Naomi heard about it, she was in Moab, that God had visited his people. Amen. God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We got to know that God is with us. Yes, yes, Lord. If they would have stayed there, they would have known. But she but she, she begins to come back. Don't call me Naomi. Don't call me Naomi. Don't call me pleasant. Call me bitter. <laughs> My name is Mara. Call me bitter. Yes. Because when you bitter, you begin to say some things that's not even true. Amen. You begin to haul off some things and, and some stuff you may regret. But then God still, God just look over that. He give you a chance enough because Naomi didn't get to the point where she needed to repent for this wrong. But Naomi was studying, talking about what God had done to her. But as Ruth gleaned all of this barley and all of this that she had. Now, Naomi, you said God unless you, God built. But then God is blessing you through Ruth. Amen. God is blessing you through Ruth. Yes. Then she took it up. And went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleaned. So she brought out and gave to her what she had kept back after she had been satisfied. Do you see how Ruth seemed like that she's working for Naomi? Like, Naomi, you have helped me come to God. And I see that you kind of distance right now. And it's like Ruth really trying to get Naomi back to that place where she can see that God will, God will provide. Now, remember Ruth just not coming. How, how did Ruth got this much faith to believe that God Amen. would do it? Ruth stayed out there at work. She said, I got to take this back. I got to give this to Naomi to show her where I believe. I ain't got satisfied. Now I got to give this to Naomi. And Naomi see all of this? And she said, where, where have you gleaned? Where have you gleaned from? And the mother-in-law said to her, where have you gleaned today? Yes, and where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. Now, <laughs> Naomi yes. said, now she began to speak pleasant words again. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the one who took notice of you. 
Let us be the one who took notice of you. Where did you clean? Where did you work? Because she said, now this this was this took some hard work. Where did you clean? Who field was you in? Hallelujah. Set time. Favor already set up. Provision. Sometimes you don't even see what all that that's stored up for you. Sometimes you don't even know what God has stored up to you until you get into a proper place at a proper time where you can begin to see God's hand and you begin to, to see the blessings of God. Sometimes you don't see that. Mm -hmm. But Naomi began to give God the praise. Yeah. Miss Pleasant now. Bitter is gone. It's Miss Pleasant is back. <laughs> see, we got to get rid of Miss Bitter. <laughs> We got to get rid of that mentality. I don't got to be bitter. Yeah. Whatever's hurting me, whatever's bothering me, I got to let it go. And Naomi got to that point where she began to speak pleasant again. Yeah. God have not forsaken. God have not forsaken you, Naomi. <laughs> so you got to know God ain't forsaking you when things don't look like, when you, you feel like you're going through stuff and you feel like this ain't happening too quick. You still got to trust God. God, you ain't forsaken me because you told me you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You told me you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And we got to trust God's word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. Amen. And Naomi said to her, This man is a relation of ours, one of our close relatives. I told you that God was, God is so merciful, even when Naomi hadn't repented for their wrongs and she accused God, God still so merciful where he came back and showed his faithfulness. Amen. See, we take advantage of God's grace. And God's mercy. We use God's grace like it's a grace card. We can use it whenever we want to. But your grace card will run out one day. Because you cannot just lean on grace and feel like I can live any type of way. God was so merciful unto, un, uh, to Naomi where now God's faithfulness. He being faithful to me after on said all, all of these things towards him. On life. All of this. Yes. But God looked past that. And God began to show Naomi, Naomi, I'm with you. Yes. I never left you. You left me. See, a lot of times we leave God in our hearts. We can come to church, but we'll leave God in our hearts. Amen. But God said, I never left you. Yes. I never left you. And he showed how faithful he was. Where he began to bless. And then that godly connection, he connected her to her closest relative. Not just any relative. That's why I say that, 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 that your appointed time for your ordained favor. Not just any relative. But a wealthy relative. <laughs> I'm talking about wealthy. Boaz was wealthy. So he didn't just connect them with any relative that wasn't of no help, no source, no nothing, but a wealthy relative. Favor. Naomi said, this is one of our closest relatives. <laughs> Close relative. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, God know how to hook us up if we allow God to connect us. God know how to do it. But when you put your hands in it, now I'm going to go over here. You looking at the way somebody dressed, what they drive, you feel like they already got what you need and all that. And you don't know they just as broke as you is. Right. Amen. You, don't, you don't even know it. But the one that you looking past is the one that got the money in his boot, in the bank account, under the bed, and in the closet. You don't even know. He already got your ticket to get out of where you at. If you allow, it's not about the money. I'm saying to the point where getting you where God wants you to get. Now, Naomi in a state, she didn't have no more family. So she that's the reason why she came back to Bethlehem. That's the reason why she came back. 
She said, I got to get back home because God don't visit them. But Ruth ended up going with her. Have you ever noticed why is the book of Ruth is Ruth and not Naomi? See, somebody, Naomi, began to teach. Naomi began to mother. But somebody got to pass the torch. Somebody, she birthed Ruth out. Amen. Amen. See, you don't see the mothers like that no more in the churches Can where they birthing out. the daughters out yeah. or the son to go forth in God. Yeah. She birthed Amen. Ruth out. She taught Ruth. Amen. She taught Ruth how to carry herself. Mm -hmm. She was giving Ruth instructions, simple instructions. It said the older women teach the younger women. Yes. But now you look for some of the older mothers and mm -hmm. they more loose than some of the younger Amen. women. And now the younger women is teaching the older. Amen. And it's like, okay, God, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Because it has been a switch. Because when people get outside of the will of God and they don't want to obey God anymore, they're not caring about anybody else but themselves because of selfishness. Because of selfishness. And when they get to that point, are they afraid from you getting to a place farther than where they Amen. were? That's when jealousy and envy, because they see something in you Amen. that you might ain't, ain't grab hold to yet, and they try to stop you. I remember, hallelujah, I, re I remember a mother, hallelujah, and I'm talking about holy, holy, um, and she, she, would, she would give me nuggets, and she would call me on the phone, Mother Cunningham, and we would talk, and we would talk, and Mother Cunningham said, my phone about to go dead, baby, but let me let me grab hold and plug this other phone up. She'll have her other battery charging because she was so serious and so concerned about soul. Yeah. I don't care where you was if you was in the store. She is been a minister. She's been a person. She don't care who's looking at her. Amen. She was more of how you should conduct yourself as a young woman. I got filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. in this woman's driveway, and we was there at earlier that day, and I didn't leave till that night. <laughs> she didn't let me leave that night. Yes, <laughs> she said, press in, sis, press in, press in. And she began to, we began to pray and praise God and pray and praise God, but I got filled right there in her driveway. Amen. <laughs> And she was all about helping young women. When she seen something wasn't right, Amen. if she seen that your 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 your, your clothes might have been too short, she went to you in love. She went to you in love, like okay, sis. And she tried to see if she could help and assist in any type of way. Now I've I ran into some other ones where you can't tell me nothing because I don't want to hear it from you. Amen. You mean? You bitter? You angry? But Mother Cunningham showed it in love. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to get back to, where we will show people how it's, we make it so hard on living a holy life. But Naomi birthed Ruth out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be able to birth somebody out. You got to be able to help them. When they first come to God, you got to show them the right way to go. Amen. You got to show them how to line themselves. It ain't that you got to throw the Bible down they throw, but you got to show them. You can win them without saying one word. Amen. Because we're living epistles read by all men. If they see you living right and they see you doing right, you can draw them Amen. closer to God. Yes. Yes. Your wisdom. That's the reason why we need to continue to ask God for wisdom. That's my prayer. God, more wisdom. Make wisdom my sister and understanding my nearest kin because I need your wisdom. We need the love of God because we got some mean saints. I ain't even going to call them saints yet because you can't be that mean and be a saint. You're an ain't. Amen. You're an ain't. Because people, I have ran into people and they have been ran from churches just because people are so mean. And that's not of God. Amen. God, and you think that you finna really bust heaven open? Yeah. You better.
better examine yourself Amen. with all that hate and unforgiveness and all that lying and bitterness. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Don't fool yourself. I don't care if you go to church every Sunday. You got to check your heart. You got. We all got to do it every day. You got to examine yourself daily. Amen. That you really keep it. And Naomi got to the point she burst out. That's the reason why the book is Ruth. It's not Naomi. It's not Boaz. Boaz with all the money in the book is not Boaz. Naomi, the mother that was there before Ruth, but it's Ruth. Her faithfulness. Our faithfulness. We don't care about the faithfulness anymore. Well, God, I'm going to be faithful in whatever it is that you're calling me to do. I just want to be faithful. Yes. Faithful to God. Because if you ain't faithful to God, how are you going to be faithful to anyone else or anything else? We got to be faithful. We got to be faithful to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to be faithful to God. Be faithful. If you're not faithful, that's the reason why when you give and you do stuff, make sure it's unto God. Hallelujah. Word or deed, do it as unto the Lord. Because if you don't, and you're expecting God, God, why am I not blessed? And I'm giving and I'm doing this. And God, I'm serving and I'm being faithful. Check your heart. Amen. Amen. Check your heart. Yes. Am I giving the right way? God? Yes. You got to empty yourself out because we come to church and we dressing up, but we, we got so much in us that need to be out of us. But Naomi taught Ruth, this is the way you go. This is the way you carry yourself. This is the way. Go here. Stay here. Do what he tells you to do. Yes, that's right, daughter. Yes, that's right. When you mentor somebody, you want to do it in the right way, the right spirit. Do it in love. Amen. Don't turn them down before they can even get in. Get in the dome real good. Get on the altar real good. Get in God real good. You got to give them a chance. You got to teach them because they don't know. Amen. If you got any word in you, you give them the word. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out first. Let's go to 21. Ruth the Moabite said, he also said to me, you shall stay close by the young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with the young women and that people do not meet you in any other field. She told her, Boaz told her, he, he said, now, you go where the young men, go where the, where the young men at, you stay with the young men. But when she told Naomi, look what Naomi did. The reason why Boaz told her to stay with the young men because he already told the young men what yeah, to leave yeah. back and what to do and all that. Yeah. But look at the mother in Naomi. Yeah. Naomi said, now Boaz told her to stay with the men. Naomi come back and Naomi told her, you go out with the young women. Yeah. Yes, daughter, that's right, what he told you, but you, stay, you go out with the young women. Really saying, don't just go and be with the young men, but go out with the young women. Amen. Because a lot of times we want to connect ourselves, like, okay, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do that. But she gave her wisdom. So that you don't fall, they don't fall. Amen. See, because we come and we try to make men of God fall, women fall, of the way that we may carry ourselves, Amen. the way that we may go Amen. around them, and all of that. You got to be cautious because them are your brothers. And Amen. them are your sisters in Amen. Christ. Amen. And so you have to be careful the way that you carry yourself. But Naomi gave her with She said, you go out with the young women. Yes. But Boaz said, you stay with the young men. But he was telling her the young men. But Naomi, see, she hearing from Naomi. She hearing what Boaz said. But she hearing what Naomi said because she the mother. Yes. With the wisdom. You need women of God that's going to teach. Oh, yes. Amen. Women of God. Yes. You're going to... See, we try to get in this image out there in the world because they were this and they do this. I can do that. Come on. Yes. But when you say you're holy, Come on now. Yes. you're saying 
you sanctified. Mm -hmm. So that means that you set apart. You, you're, you're not like no other. Yeah. So you set apart. Why are you trying to fit in with the world? Why are you trying to dress like the world? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to... You, when you come as women of God, as women of God, when you come in the house of God, we know. Amen. We know as women of God. Yes. Other women know as women of God. Amen. With what you got on, Amen. that's not right for the house of God. Come on now. Because I got brothers yes. in this place. Yes. I'm concerned about my brothers. Yes. Where they won't fall. Yes. Even though you say, well, all of us just family. But yeah, be careful what you're trying to do to family. Amen. Because you might be the one to try to divide the family. Yes, Naomi was a teacher. Naomi was teaching Ruth. We got to get back to teaching young women and young men how to come before God. Not just anyway. We got to get back to honoring God. Yes. Giving God all the honor. Yes. Honoring God's house. We feel like, I, yeah, I know that we are in a small storefront church, but this is dedicated unto God. Amen. This is holy ground. Amen. The pastor lived right. Amen. The evangelist, his wife, lived right. Amen. We live right before God. Amen. We honor God with everything we have. And it concerns me now. It concerns me very deeply how now we don't care. Amen. We don't care how we come about. We don't care how we come in God's house. We don't care what we throw up to God. We throw God anything. I'll worship you this way. But we have to check ourselves. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because I want to be birthed out the right way. I tell my husband, I don't want to do nothing without God. And if you tell me to sit down or this ain't right or that ain't right, I'm going to do it. Because I want to stay right before God. When you're concerned about, see, get concerned about your own soul. Amen. Get concerned about your own soul. People are dying and going to hell every day. Amen. Because somebody didn't tell them the truth. Every day. Somebody just was concerned about what they had and what they gave. Amen. But you got to tell people the truth. Yes. Amen. Because if not, and that responsibility is up on you, guess what? That blood is going to be on your hands. Amen. <laughs> Who want to come and play church? Who want to come and just show up and say, I went to church. No, I need something to take place. I need the church to get in me because the church is the called out one. Yeah, we are the church. Everywhere we go, the church goes. Every time we stand, the church stands. Yes. But if you don't believe that and you have not got to that point of seeing yourself as the church, as the called out ones, yes. get on that altar Amen. and ask God to do surgery yes. on you where you can get to the place where God wants you to Miracles are supposed to be taking place in God's house. The great deliverance is supposed to be taking place in God's house. And you don't want anything blocking it. Because you can be blocking your own deliverance. You can be blocking your own healing. Because I'm not willing to let go what's in me. That hate, that bitterness, that jealousy, that unforgiveness, what they did when I was 6, 7, 8, 10, 13, 20, 80, whatever it is. We got to give it over to God. Yeah, God. And say, God, do surgery on me. Yes, Lord. Because why shout and dance down here? Yes. Why preach and pray so hard and end up going to hell? Yes, Lord. Why are we going to do it? We got to get busy for yes, God. Lord. We got to say, God, break me in your presence. Yes, do this, God. Do it, God. Yes, Lord. Oh God, break me in your presence, God. That I don't be the same. I don't look the same. That my love walk is different. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Yes, Lord. We got to be like Naomi. Yes. We got to raise somebody else up. Yes. We got to raise another roof up. Yes. We got to birth another roof out. Yes. We can't be selfish and think about ourselves. Amen. We got to think about somebody else. Yes, somebody Lord. else is waiting on us. Yes, somebody Lord. else is waiting on our arrival. Oh. Somebody else is waiting on our encouragement. Somebody else is waiting. Amen. But where are we? Amen. Yes, but where are we? Amen. Yes, Lord. Where are we? Yes. Yes. Where are we? Yes. Because the time is winding down. It's winding down. God has said, will my people be prepared? Yes, yes. I have been saying prepare, 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 prepare. Will my people be ready? Hey, Will they hear my voice? Yes, Lord. Oh God. Yes, Lord. Mm, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We gotta hear God. Thank you, Jesus. And we gotta obey God. Yes, Lord. Of God having his way. Hallelujah. We have appointed time. Yes, Lord. For our day and faith. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. God know all things. Yes. Hallelujah. Let God do it. Thank you, Jesus. Let God do it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Jesus. Well, thanks to God. I think that you need to hear the cry. Amen. This morning. Yes, Lord. That the Spirit of God is raising up in this house. Yes, Lord. Amen. Lord. We don't need to reject when the Lord is speaking to us. Amen. Speaking to our heart. Amen. There was a word of a cry there at the end of God pleading with you about some things, you know, that we know that we need to get in order with the Lord. Amen. Stand on your feet around the building. Amen. Truly, God is good. If you can stand, stand. If you if you standing is gonna hurt you, then just rest rest where you at. Amen. Amen. I I want Sister Sand to get a New Testament scripture, if she don't mind, and then come up and read it after Deacon Turner open up. Amen. This morning. Sound of the trumpet. <laughs> Amen. That Jesus is risen. Amen. But I want her to get a New Testament scripture. Amen. I want Deacon Cunningham to get an Old Testament scripture. Amen. So after Deacon Turner, we want. Amen. Evangelist Sandra. Is it Sandra? Sandra. Sandra. Amen. To come up after him and read that scripture. We want. Deacon Cunningham to come up and read the Old Testament scripture. And after them, praise will be in the hand of the praise team. Yes, Amen. If you're in a sound of a trumpet loud, come on up, Deacon. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord. When you count to three, Ooh. you already know what to say. When I count to three, one, two, three. Hallelujah! Jesus is Yes. We need to look to God. We need to look to Him for everything like we can. 